take it away. Thanks so much, Jen, and um, apologies for the technical difficulties. I'll just s flip through this pretty quickly because I know we're short on time now, but thanks for having me. Um, as she said, my name's Shay. I tend to throw up this picture to humanize myself and share the reasons why I do the work I do. And it's uh, my little boy and my wife there. Um, working on Asher Labs, which is innovation consulting for utilities and Harper Jacobs, where we write content. It's a combination of the two things I, I'm skilled at, for lack of a better way to put it. Um, I'll start with a quick story. Uh, the old utility used to look something like this. Um, this house has a windmill to run the water into the main house. And for the most part, this stayed the same until... Um, Samuel Insul got into the game and did what corporations do, brought economies of scale to um, just improve pricing because that rig you saw um, in the first slide there was pretty expensive to run, but aggregated businesses could be built um, that would supply power to uh, many more homes than just the one uh, facility that you saw there. And the very simplistic structure of the industry up until recently was power generation happened on one end, transmitted to your home. And um, just to take a quick step back, I'm not a designer, but a lot of the work you guys do is now impacting my industry. And this is as much a, an outreach to all of you as it is a quick primer on what you're getting yourselves involved in uh, so that we can all achieve the same goals we have, um, even though we're coming from um, different sides of, of this problem. Um, this image is um, a power station, the, the type of power station I worked at for a few years. And back to the point Andrew uh, made in the last presentation, you had these power stations, one like this, the one I worked in, served about 400,000 homes in, in London. The data centers we were starting to put into the system over the next few years will require 50 of such power plants in the US alone just to run those data centers. And that's a bit of a, of a problem because we're using... Um, diesel and natural gas in some of these places, which are not sustainable fuels, um, despite what, any, what anyone might say. And we still have some coal plants as well. Um, the utility industry is a very complex system. And the next phase of the industry can be predicted um, if you think about this as a complex system. They bundle and then they unbundle. And the unbundling is sort of what's happening right now. The unbundling is happening at the same time as this grid is becoming a lot more connected. And um, the connection here just means the utility or whoever is providing you power now also gets signals from you in the form of data telling them when you need power, what you're using it for. And all these changes, the disruption that is happening because of unbundling, um, again, back to the systems thinking concept, can be explained. We just need to look in other industries and see how these changes are happening. Um, I've written a book about these changes, but the innovation and the impact of the innovation in design and, and product development that's going on for the industry is now moving the electricity generation from these big bulky buildings in far off places into our homes. And this, this just shows what Navigant calls it, um, the retail industry, um, the retail future of the utility industry. And what that looks like is a ton of solar panels, which unfortunately doesn't look, in my opinion anyway, that much different from those huge power plants we had because we're now having to manufacture all these things, which in itself just throws out CO2 into the environment. And we, also, we need to start to pay a little bit more attention to things like this, even as we move from the coal plants to the solar panels, 
when we start to build solar farms to supply huge homes, there's a lot that we're doing on the on the full supply chain to get the solar panels to the roofs that starts to almost negate the effects of the solar panels we're putting on those roofs. And in the same <laughs> at the same time as we're throwing the solar panels up, everyone's building a smart device for the home. Um, and these devices are being built to be beautiful, desirable, and what happens when things like that happen, consumers buy, we all buy. I, despite all I say, I want to have an Alexa um, in my home. My son wants to be able to play whatever music he likes from these devices. And again, this is great, but probably not the best for sustainability goals. Um, and I'll just throw up a few slides with some products that are utility products for the home aimed to reduce the energy we use. Uh, like the Nest, we have um, the Nivea shower, which is uh, was a successful Kickstarter to reduce um, energy usage, or sorry, water usage at home. We have this Wally Home leak detector to prevent leakage um, and notify early detection system for leakage, and just these um, smart plugs that reduce and switch off things when they're required. And you also have AWARE, which is air quality measures. But the I'd say the biggest, most familiar of these retail energy products would be um, the Tesla suite of products, which are all fitting into our new modeled Casita Homes. This is a company here in Austin, and it's a self-sustaining home, beautifully designed. There's a lot of work going on um, that all these devices that we're now putting into our homes to make it smart and use energy in a more efficient way start to get us to a point where, as Gartner suggests, even though I don't believe this number, they suggest we'll have about 500 smart devices in our homes by 2022. That is scary, in my opinion, because it's probably time for us to start to think about reducing some of these products um, inclusions in our home so it doesn't get out of hand. And I put some rules here. You are the designers. I'm just throwing out for brainstorming here. Why don't we build products that are multi-purpose? Um, this both stores and retrieves and um, provides energy. So it is to a certain extent. Um, this is the product I'm working on, which is water efficiency, water quality. But again, Make it dual purpose is the point here. Um, and then take full life cycle responsibility. This is a blank slide because I couldn't find one company that is designing a smart home product that has taken full responsibility for disposal of the product at the end of its life. We, start, we need to start to think about things like that. And um, sustainability woven into the form and function. Um, this is a pro project at MIT, smaller homes, our homes went from 900 square feet to about 2,000 over the course of about 20-something years. It's probably time to start to rethink that. And um, educate the consumers with the products. This is a bill we designed a few years ago that educated consumers in the eight minutes they spend with their utilities in a year. Um, uh, I'll, I'll end with this quote which is um, credited to Gandhi, that speed is irrelevant if you're traveling in the wrong direction. And we're really traveling fast. A search on Amazon shows 152,000 smart home devices. And at some point that becomes unsustainable, even if those products are meant to make us a little bit more sustainable. So thanks, sorry again, had to rush it, but glad to be um, presenting to you all today. Thank you. Thank you very much. And, you know, again, even if what you're describing was a rush talk, I think that was fantastic. And there's a lot of really, really good food for thought here. So thank you again. And thank you for your patience and helping sort out some of the tech as well. Um, let no us. I said, not a problem. Thank you. Oh, thank you.